Today is November 15th, 2022, and this marks the third anniversary for the Marvel Crisis Protocol Miniatures game. And this is going to be my video of the way that I painted Year 3's releases of all the paintable figures and sets and everything that came out for the game. I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but for posterity's sake, I have to say that this is the third year anniversary of the game. Usually I go through the anniversary of me running the thread, but I've decided to actually just forgo that and get right to the anniversary of the game. Also, I wasn't trying to give a tour of everything I owned. We had a basement flood this year, so the house is a mess. I don't live in this much squalor. I was looking for my list of the stuff in order so I could show them in the proper order. I uh, wasn't just uh, showing off board game collections and piles of expansions and things. But let's get to the video. Methinks that I have to get a little bit of a better display going. Hopefully once I repair the damages to the basement I can do a little better than this. Because right now, this ain't going to cut it for the next year. And uh, here's a... Weird Berenstain Bears Pittsburgh Penguins picture I drew, but uh, yeah, this is pretty. Whoop! Lag lore! That is not Marvel Crisis Protocol! We're gonna start with CPE 01, which is Spider Man vs. Dr. Octopus. Now, I got this because I, you know, want everything and have some sort of an obsessive behavior over it, but. I got it hoping to incorporate it into my main games as a terrain piece, and it just, it kind of works sometimes, keep it on the corner or whatever, it still looks okay. Has some neat pieces, but it doesn't really work as a terrain piece, it is meant to be a diorama. But with Spider-Man, I went with like a really light blue and an orange at the suggestion of a co-worker. You can see that crack on his foot, that is the first casualty I've ever had in this game due to a cat. So, he snapped off at the foot after falling off of the shelf that he was on. This is my Dr. Octopus. Just, uh, went with the more gray and mustard color theme with him. Because usually, when I get a, another variation of a character, I try to change how they are painted so they don't just all look the same. I kept my Oscorp logo with a purple OS. Uh, orange CO and a green RP like I did back when I painted my chemical truck that had the Oscorp on the side. So yeah, neat little piece though. This is why it really doesn't work too much. It ruins the immersion. But uh, that's it. Kept the colors all as uniform as I could. Pretty neat little thing. Ready for the next ones to come out. As a bonus, before I get into the official November 20th, 2021 till November 20th, 2022 releases, this is a first attempt at a kit bash that I did, and it involves the New York City apartment terrain kit that I kind of cut some pieces off and made my own custom thing. I did it to um, uh, just bring some attention to one of my friend's breweries. He runs it. It's called Savage Mountain Brewing Company, and it's out of North Carolina. So I made a little beer arcade game room type thing. So the front side has uh, KD's Savage Mountain, and then this side is a little bit where the kit bashing, I guess you can call it that, even though I didn't really do too much. This is where it started. I took the fire escape ladders and just made a ladder on the side of the building. The hair dryer got a little too over ambitious on that one but uh got these here danger do not let electro near and then put this fire hydrant on the side of the building which is something i had seen in pictures and stuff that they come out of the sides of some buildings in new york looks weird but i did it anyway and then a john marston wanted poster around the back i kind of created a little shipping dock not too much special going on. And then on the game room on the side, 
I uh, got some Lazy Daisy Woodworking, which is another business one of my buddies owns. And uh, some advertised games. They are all games that I enjoy playing. But these are all actual um, silhouettes of real mountains. I don't remember which ones off the top of my head, but there is 10 favorite mountain peaks. And then up top, I just kind of did an outdoor patio. And I did my first attempt at resin, which is cheap resin, and it came out looking cheap. But anyway, that's that. Let's get started in the 2021 to 2022 releases. Up first in CP order is CP44, the Crashed Sentinel Terrain Kit. Kept it white and red. Tried to go with some traditional sentinel colors. And opted in with the arm resting on the windshield of the SUV. And I got the rocks on quick change sign here. And then the little sentinel head. Forget if any other pieces came with these. I'm going to try and highlight them, but I may be missing like a mailbox or fire hydrant or something. Here is CP51, the Sentinels Mark IV. These guys were a lot of fun to paint. I went with kind of traditional 90s X-Men cartoon colors, but uh, really cool details, fun to pose them, fun to paint them, fun to build them. I wish I could field more than two in a team because if I did I'd probably have some more of these guys. Here we have CP52 the Hulk Buster. My Iron Man that's came with it is kind of a disappointing paint job. I don't know what happened here but yeah not too great but the Hulk Buster itself I was quite proud of how I did on it. I think it looks pretty cool. And then you got here, I added a little uh, kill count. So I got the Red Hulk, Red She-Hulk, and She-Hulk on there. But uh, not Hulk, because the Hulk Buster has never beaten the Hulk in the comics. At least uh, at the date of me doing this. When I painted it, I'm sure there's been something that happened now. And it's refusing to focus, so whatever. It it did and you get the idea there we go little free hand on the uh, Hulk, Hulk heads next up we have CP 55 which is Nick Fury jr. and the shield agents went with the bright blue and white for Nick Fury jr. and then with the shield agents I went for a dark blue a light blue and a brown just to give them some visual variation next is CP 56 juggernaut I was waiting a long time from announcement to release to get my hands on this one I really like it I thought it came out awesome proud of my paint job on it and he's just a sweet looking figure and then Hulk smash because uh, Try to include the Hulk wherever I can. CP57, Colossus and Magic. So this is how I did Magic. It's kind of eh feeling about it after painting it. Turned out fine enough. Colossus, he was pretty cool. I got some liquid chrome on his body to give him that metallic shine and apparently he ripped off the other sentinel's arm no way no I think those are both right arms from the crash terrain in this whatever doesn't really matter but here's Colossus and magic now we've got CP 60 gambit and rogue so painted up gambit and tried to get some traditional coloring on him and I got rogue which I still struggle with explosions and such. Just something I haven't been able to get better at. CP62, Miss Marvel 
in her little form and her embiggened form. This is a character I had no interest in and I just painted for the sake of painting it because unpainted is not my style anymore for this game. But anyway, yeah, there's Miss Marvel. CP64 is Mordo and the Ancient One. Painted up the Ancient One in all yellow. Hood on, did not go for the hood off variant. And then Mordo. These ones were the first ones to be more inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe than the comics. And I kind of hope they stick with the comics, because while the MCU is entertaining, I just, I don't know, prefer the comic styling. This is CP65. We got Dr. Voodoo and Hood. So here's Hood in his pre-transformation. And here is the transformed Hood. This is 67, CP67, Dr. Strange, and Clea. So this is Clea. Tried to freehand the circles on her pants, and I just did not do as well as I've seen other people do. Wasn't sure what I did wrong, but as you can see, it's kind of gross. But anyway, if you recall my Dormammu from last year, I had a unique color on his base. Well, I tried to recreate that color so that the Doctor Strange that came out around the same time, or in the same run of figures, not really the same time, would have a similar colored base. And I already have a traditionally suit colored uh, Doctor Strange, so I just went with this white and orange with some, doesn't come quite as well across on the video, but some slightly holographic turbo dork paints on his cape to give it a little bit of a mystical holographic type look. And if anybody's wondering how sturdy these are, as I was walking outside to put this on the table to make this video, Doctor Strange fell about four and a half feet onto the concrete. So the only damage was the tip of his little flame there. It just snapped. But yeah, I mean, pretty sturdy, I guess. <sighs> Next up, we have CP68, the Sanctum Sanctorum. This is one of the longest pieces I ever painted. I had about 22 hours to get it fully painted up. But this is it. And man, I was proud of this when I was done with it. This is the Sanctum Sanctorum. So I did that. But on each side of the building, there are little Easter eggs. I guess not really if I'm pointing them out. But... This one has my name, D-E-R-E-K, and then on this side of the building, we've got covered up by vines, oops, then we got the red hot chili pepper symbol there, and then on this side, we got the green lantern lantern. I don't remember what is under the vines, there was something under there, but is lost to the glue, and I'm not going to rip it off to rediscover it. What? Dormammu is still pleased with the uh, Sanctum. We got CP71, I believe. It's uh, X23 and Honey Badger. Again, two characters that I really don't know much about. And besides the movie Logan, I guess, that's all I really know about X23. I don't know who Honey Badger is, but she looks kind of lame. Next is CP-72, the Quinjet Terrain. This is my first of two Quinjets. This one is the Poison Ivy. So, got the uh, World War II style pin-up type thing there. Blue windows. Sorry, a beetle was coming up at my leg and it was gross. Anyway, blue windows. And I went with the camo coloration for it. Then we got the other Quinjet, which is the Gamma Rage. This one I went with gold-tinted windows, did some freehand shield logos, 
And here is visual proof that when it's humid outside, do not use your spray primers because it creates these weird bubbles, which I just tell myself is part of the metal manufactured to make a Quinjet. But still really happy with both of these things. I thought they were pretty cool. Took a lot longer to paint than I thought they would. But, yep, that's the Gamma Rage. Which is uh, a really neat piece of Hulk art that came from the original Versus System card game. Which I believe the name of the card was Gamma Rage. And then the Poison Ivy. Here we have CP-74, Red Skull and the Hydra Troopers. I do not like painting things all the same colors so I had to make one of these guys stand out a little differently uh, Red Skull was pretty fun to paint shaking but yeah painted these guys with a migraine yellow came out kind of bad there's a lot of spotty parts or whatever but they play the same and I'm probably not gonna go back and touch it up then we have CP-75, Nick Fury Sr. and the Howling Commandos. Got uh, Gabe and Dum 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 Dugan flanking Nick Fury. CP-76, Arnim Zola and Baron Strucker. So Zola is one of the first pieces besides Wasp to use the clear plastic molding. However, they did it so you could get the face and the chest painted up and have a little window for it. It was a pretty fun little thing to paint. And then got Strucker here. Not much to say about him because I don't know much about the character. CP-77, Captain America and the original Human Torch. So this is, as everybody always states before anybody's like, Oh, Fantastic Four. This is the Android version, the very first Human Torch, which was an Android, not Fantastic Four. So this is the Captain America that I went with. I wanted to do, as usual, non-traditional colors, because this is the second version of the Steve Rogers Captain America, so I went with an all-white suit, still red, white, and blue themed. But that's my take on him for this. And I've got some sandbags and such that he's running on, or potato bags, I guess, was the reference I used for Google. World War II potato bag. CP-79, Shadowland Daredevil, Electra. And the Hand Ninjas. The Hand Ninjas were a pretty neat paint job. Electra, she was pretty easy to paint up, I guess. Not too much to her. And then there's my Shadowland Daredevil. Again, another simple paint job. Got CP81, Black Swan, and Supergiant. Didn't quite know how to do Telekinetic Parasite, so I just went with gray salmon and pink to represent her powers got cp88 the crimson dynamo and dark star again not too much to say about these characters as i don't know much about them but uh added some glittery effect to dark star and her base to give her little visual flair CP-89, we got Red Guardian and Ursa Major. I tried to go with the fur effect again. Another effect I've seen replicated way better on the internet by more skilled painters than I. But these characters were alright to paint up. CP-93, Malekith the Accursed. This one was a ton of fun to paint up. Went with... Uh, White Tiger with black stripes. My wife was the one who gave me the idea to put a little bit of gold in there. Came out really well. It was fun to paint him up. And the Bog Tiger that he's riding. Pretty neat figure. CP-102, Heimdall and Scourge. So Heimdall was a little bit of a challenge to paint. I tried to go individual 
lines on the rainbow effect here. And then added some glittery paint to it. And then he was, I don't know, didn't really approach him a certain way. I just slapped some colors on him. So that's Heimdall and Scourge. All right, this one I took a vote on my Instagram and Facebook through all my friends and family on what two main colors this guy should be. Gold and black were chosen. So this is CP. 160 the sentinel prime might get another one because there's a damaged variant you can make and that's pretty neat and he was a lot of fun to paint and i'm considering doing that if i do if i'm able to make a year four video that is where you will see that one but as of right now this was year three's releases